Let's build that medical brain. Now that you've understood everything about pulmonary embolism, things have changed. Normally, whenever you have a patient with pulmonary embolism, we used to always call it into three different types. We used to call it benign, or we used to call it submassive, or we call it massive. Whenever we get used to something, what do people like to do? They like to change things to confuse everybody. But the change is not so bad, it's hard to understand. Let's think about it. When you say massive pulmonary embolism, what do you need to have? You'll have a pulmonary embolism, right? But you also need to have what? Hemodynamic instability. If you're hemodynamically unstable, then you're going to have a massive pulmonary embolism. Pretty straightforward. When it comes to a benign PE, it's just a small blood clot that sits in your lungs and that's it. It's not causing any strain on your heart, right? But when it comes to submassive, what are you supposed to have? Are you going to be hemodynamically stable? Yes, because it's submassive. Massive is the only one that will be hemodynamically unstable. When you say submassive, you are hemodynamically stable, but the clot is big enough that it's causing problems on your heart. So when you say submassive, you typically will have what? You will be hemodynamically stable. You will have some evidence of right heart strain, right? Whenever your right heart is strained, what would you release? Troponin and BNP. So those are the two things you always check when you're patient with PE. So you will have elevated BNP and elevated troponin. Now would massive pulmonary embolism have right heart strain? Of course it would. Would it have elevated troponin BNP? Of course it would. The only difference is it's much worse that it's hemodynamically unstable. This is the norm that we've always understood for the longest time. But now the terms have changed. If you have a benign PE, you now call this a low risk PE. Okay? If it is a massive PE, we call this a high risk PE. Okay? And if it is submassive, we are going to call it intermediate risk PE. Got it? Very simple. That's the major change they've done. Benign, we call it low risk. Massive, we call it high risk. Now, when it comes to submassive, we call it intermediate risk. But the intermediate risk, you can divide this further to low intermediate versus a high intermediate. Okay? This is your new classification when it comes to pulmonary embolism. Now, what I have written on the board on this side, what is this? Whenever it comes to pulmonary embolism, what is the score that you have to calculate? You calculate PESI score, pulmonary embolism severity index, which is a longer scoring system. But you now have a simplified PESI score, which is this. Age more than 80, history of cancer, history of cardiopulmonary disease, if your heart rate is greater than 110, systolic blood pressure is less than 100, or the patient's pulse ox saturation is less than 90%. This is your simplified PESI score. And you got how many points? Six points. Okay. If you have a low risk PE, your PESI score typically will be zero. Okay. How do you treat a low risk PE? Do you have to admit the patient to the hospital? No. You can discharge the patient on oral anticoagulation. Easy. Got it? That's easy. If a patient's got a massive PE, your PESI score doesn't matter as much because it's a massive PE. What matters here is you will admit the patient to inpatient and the patient is going to get what? Thrombolytics, right? You're going to give the patient thrombolytics. That's how you're going to treat it, right? Now, when it comes to submassive, which is now called intermediate risk PE, you have low risk versus Low intermediate versus high intermediate. So in order for us to call it intermediate risk PE, okay, you're going to need a PESI score greater than or equal to 1. Even if you had one point, 
that automatically is going to fall into your intermediate risk. The reason for this change is to kind of dictate how you're going to treat your patient. Okay, if your PESI score was zero, you treat it as an outpatient, forget about it, done. Okay, whereas if it comes to submassive, which is intermediate risk, you see a PESI score greater than one, right? Then what you do in low to high to differentiate between the two, you ask yourself two important questions. Is there evidence of right heart strain? Is there elevated markers? Okay, so is there evidence? So here, no evidence of right heart strain imaging and no elevated markers such as troponin and BNP. Okay, whereas high intermediate, you must have at least more than or equal to one evidence of right heart strain or should have at least more than a one elevated biomarker. Got it? That's the difference. So when it comes to low intermediate, do you have to admit the patient to hospital? Yes, you do. You will admit the patient because you're at an intermediate risk of PE. So you still worry about problems going to happen. So you put the patient in the hospital, you admit them, and you can start them on oral anticoagulation directly. Okay. Now, if you go to high intermediate PE, you see you have signs of right heart strain. You have signs of biomarkers getting elevated. You obviously going to admit the patient to inpatient, right? But are you going to start the patient on a DOAC? Or do you prefer starting them on a heparin drip? You prefer starting them on a heparin drip. Why? Because this patient might become massive, right? Or the patient might undergo a procedure such as a thrombectomy. Because of that reason, you will start the patient on a heparin drip first. Okay? Heparin drip first, see how the patient does. If you had to do some intervention, do it and then you can transition onto oral anticoagulation. Okay? Now, simply putting it, it's not much of a big change. Benign is now low risk. Massive is now high risk. Submassive is intermediate risk, which is divided further into low intermediate and high intermediate. That's it. This is the update that we need to know for managing a patient with pulmonary embolism. Every view builds your brain. Locked in yet? Watch it again.